Eureka is an interactive science comedy show where audience members and comedians will try and answer our guest scientist questions. So Eureka's Eureka is a uh, we we are passionate about enriching humanity, and we do so by disseminating scientific knowledge to the general population in a fun and engaging medium. So tonight our guest scientist is Ryan Bethencourt. Ryan Bethencourt is a scientist, entrepreneur, and biohacker. He is a co-founder and CEO of Berkeley Biolabs, and he's also a program director and venture partner at Indie Bio, which has funded 42 biotech companies. So give it up for Ryan Bethencourt. Our comedians tonight, our comedians tonight have toured across the US, some have been on TV, and we have three of them for you. They're great riffers and banters. We have Kevin Whittinghill, Natasha Muse, and Kasim Bentley. All right, so let's go ahead and start it up by asking uh, the comedians. So what do you guys, uh, what do you guys think the post-animal bioeconomy is? <laughs> That's an easy question. Uh, stupid. <laughs> post-animal bioeconomy. That's uh, just like big, uh, big vegan, right? <laughs> post-vegan, maybe. Post-vegan. Post-vegan. Post-vegan bioeconomy. So we just get rid of the vegans. And now we just. We could. Now, when, when, when everyone wants to get rid of the vegans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm vegan, so. Are you vegan? Yeah. <laughs> we can make this show a lot shorter. <laughs> Wait, say that again. What is it? Yeah. Post animal bioeconomy. Is that like some kind of post apocalyptic animal currency or something going on? <laughs> like I got a raccoon for your wife or something? Like that? <laughs> I'm down for that, dog. I'll trade my sister in for a chicken. I don't care. My sister ain't worth shit, alright? So we'll do that. She's nice. She's here. So maybe we'll do that. So let's, uh, let's see if any of our audience members have an idea. What is the post animal bio economy? <laughs> Look at all these glasses here. I'm about to take notes. <laughs> a lens crap is coming, Jenny. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and have an answer here. I'm going to take a stab. Is it. Is it Post, like the way our economies are after we stop using animals for our day-to-day -day products. Ooh. I think that's that's pretty good. Is that a Eureka moment? I think that's Eureka. Eureka! Slide me the cell phone out for our answer. Wait, is that what I said? Is that what you no. So we do have we do have uh, prizes for the audience members that do get the questions correct. So I will go ahead and give the prize, and I will introduce our product by asking Ryan to explain what is Soylent. So I, I think I think my definition of Soylent is not your mother slim fast, right? <laughs> Is this really Soylent? Yeah. So, alright, so this is Soylent? He's super excited. He's like, is this really Soylent? Like, look at the milkman come. I have to say, I learned about this two years ago, and I've been wanting to try it since. Oh, aren't you excited? Oh, wait, 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 that's what startup douchebags eat for lunch. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was like, like a people excited. Like, so I gotta get my soy lid on, man. Yeah. Gotta get my hoverboard, man. Get out of here. Like an asperger smoothie. <laughs> soy lid is made of people. Like, it's, people it's people chow, right? Yeah. So, so linking it with the post oh, 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 oh. We're gonna have you guys try this. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. That looks like a big old looks creamy there. That looks yeah. biological. <laughs> That's something I usually avoid to put in my mouth. Yeah, right. it was. Uh, you know, like. Uh, By the way, it's, it's, it's GMO inside. This looks like a really sad image. Oh, yeah. 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 Alright, ready? ready? Chug, 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 chug. Let's get some responses here. What does that taste like? Oh, that tastes like sadness. <laughs> Going down my 
my throat. This is not going to go well. Oh, it's, it coats the whole inside of your body. <laughs> yeah, this is fine. Yes, a nice smooth feeling. I oh, think maybe needs a little Tecate. See? Nice body Tecate. And I'm going to cut mine with coffee. We'll see how that goes. Oh no, the coffee's not even taking. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that was good now. That is like... Kind of a... This will get me drunk and give me diarrhea. Oh, this is good. <laughs> You need a coffee. That does not help. That does not help at all. Why did we open up a coffee shop? I think we're so inventive yeah. here. It's uh, this, is, this, is, this, is for, this is coffee for people that are about to kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, alright. So let's Final destination coffee. <laughs> let, let's let's come back to Ryan and let's talk, let's actually talk about the post animal bio. Sure, sure. Sure. So what does it mean to no longer use animals? So it means a lot of things to a lot of people, right? And so so there is no specific definition of a post animal bioeconomy. Uh, but but what people tend to think it means and what I think it means is that we we can get to the point where science can help uh, remove the use of sentient beings, of animals, and we can actually use agro we can actually use science to do that. So we can use molecular biology, so we can grow uh, meat in a vat, in a lab, so lab-grown meat, cultured meat, that's another term for it. So these are companies that you've actually funded at Indian yes. Bio. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, so this is not science fiction, this is science reality. So a company called Memphis Meats, they made the first lab-grown uh, pork meatball. That was about two two months ago, uh, and it was ind indistinguishable. Indis totally indistinguishable. It's it's the same thing, right? So the way that it works is you basically you go to a pig. Hopefully the pig's at a nice friendly sanctuary, having fun, running around, being in mud, right? You go, you take a little biopsy, a little muscle biopsy. You take those muscle cells and you grow them in a bioreactor. It kind of looks like a like at the same place where you brew beer, right? Instead of brewing beer, you're brewing muscle cells, right? <laughs> Roughly, right? And then, and then you, 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 you grow the muscle cells and like there's this big blob of muscle, right? <laughs> and then you, and you cut it up and then you eat it, right? And that's, that's, that's a meatball, right? They also made a fajita, a beef fajita. And, uh, and they ate that too, by the way. So that was, uh, check out, it's in all the like Newsweek, Fortune, all that other sort of stuff. They have a video, went viral. Check it out, Memphis Meats. They show them cooking just, the meatball. Just the video went viral, right? Yeah, yeah. Not, not the meatball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was not FDA approved. <laughs> yes, we, we, we have a question. Yes. Let's, let's oh, there's a question. Yeah, yes. A question. It does. Yeah. So, so I'm vegan. I didn't eat it. It's not fully vegan yet. <laughs> Uh, but my co-founder did, and he, he, I mean, he'll eat anything, so he, I've seen him eat chocolates with ants, right, so, but he said it, it tasted delicious, he said it tasted just like a meatball. And, and so, he one, one, of, one, of, one of the problems, and we'll get up to more questions, one of the problems to right now is that Memphis means it costs them about $18,000. It's, it's $1,000. It's only $1,000, which, which is great, which is great, so, so it's down to $1,000 now, which is great. one meatball. But, we're, <laughs> but, but Memphis <laughs> means his goal is to make it cost Pennies. That's right. That's right. So, so the aim is it's a cost curve, right? Everyone's familiar with Moore's law, right? Moore's yeah. law put these, you know, these supercomputers into our pants, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, we're gonna do the same thing. Hopefully, not meatballs in our pants, but, <laughs> but we're, we're, you know, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna drive the cost curve down. <laughs> it's a big yeah, 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 yeah. I've been watching too many Game of Thrones, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're still sipping on that. You liked yeah. it. Don't lie. I'm waiting for the high to kick in. I am poor. <laughs> <laughs> I will drink anything free. <laughs> so you're saying still the terrible. Still the technological advances in food production equals a blob of muscle? Yes. Oh, and, 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 and a blob of egg white and a blob of gelatin and anything else that biology can make including a Kanye burger if you want one, right? If you love Kanye so much, you could actually, in theory, like a burger that thing, or if you love yourself, like, like a very confident burger. Yeah. <laughs> burger in the world. Yo, I invented the cheeseburger. Yeah. I'm a genius. I need funding from Facebook. And I'm just like, no. Your pork meatball was pretty good this year, but I think that this meatball was the best of all time. Like other meatballs. Likes a burger with a big ass, perhaps? Yeah, yes. There we go. A Kim, a Kim burger. Kim oh, burger. Okay. Kim burger. Uh, yeah, make those two. Right? Wow, that sounds delicious. Yeah. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe we. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Let's have a, let's so have a question. I that um, the body cannot distinguish between uh, what is created from a certain source versus a large source. For example, the evidence you can take taken out of you know, plants and, and generated that that is created from chemicals. The body is not different. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So the question is that our body cannot distinguish between something that's lab grown versus. Yeah. So so this is a really interesting question, right? So so this is a lot of people like you know kind of the the GMO thing. It's a very controversial thing. Interesting enough, I think the controversy is dying down a little bit. But uh, people are like, oh no, I don't want to do GMOs. But the thing is, GMOs are. In theory, the proteins that are created should be indistinguishable from, from, from the, it's, it's the same sequence, right? So, so when we have the genetic code, A, G, C, T, C, 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 it's like ones and zeros, right? And if it's exactly the same code, as long as it's made in a system, in a cell that recognizes the same code, there are differences between like bacteria and yeast and animal cells and plant cells. But like, as long as it's made in the same system, right, it should be exactly the same protein. Some variants, but roughly, right? Well, kind of, right? So what Monsanto does, uh, does they do lots of stuff. They also do some chemicals and some various other things, that, especially what gave them that that kind of name. But they sometimes they take like a resistance for herbicide, a gene from one plant, and put it into another plant, corn or soy or various other things. So just from one plant to another, right? That's that's essentially it. It's DNA from one plant, they put it into another plant, right? They're not putting in, uh, as far as I'm aware, fish genes or jellyfish genes or scorpion venom or whatever else, right? Uh, that would be bad, right? That would be very bad, right? If you if you ate if you ate GMOs made with scorpion venom, bad times because it's the same protein. Or tecate. Or tecate. There's a second situation though where they did insert things like the parts of the opposite. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff around fructose, high fructose, fructose corn syrup. You said anything with corn is deadly? Yeah, is that what you said? Commercial corn. That's amazing. <laughs> How do you eat your corn? I died a few times. So. <laughs> there's a kernel of truth in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay, so we're talking about Moore's Law and what that means for biotech. Yes, so go ahead. So this is, this is what a lot of people haven't really seen yet, right? Because we, we at IndyBio, we, we really, so IndyBio, the largest biotech accelerator in the world, we started about a year and a half ago. We fund lots of stuff. We view biology as a technology. We view it as a source of, you know, how we're going to serve the next seven billion people on this planet, including people in mega cities. How do we feed them? How do we clothe them? How do we keep them healthy? Uh, we're looking for those answers uh, and through biology and biotech, the melding of software, hardware, and web biology. Right. So, uh, so what a lot of people haven't seen is uh, these huge, bio like, so, so there are huge refineries and huge bioreactors in the corn fields and sugarcane fields of like La of Brazil or the Midwest. There are these huge structures in the middle, and they actually make things like vitamins for us, right? Like those vitamins you were talking about, they're made in like yeast, right? And so, or yeast or bacteria or various other things, and they're they're like there. They're just they just brew it like in the same way we make sourdough bread or beer or various other things, right? And so. What most people haven't seen, because there aren't actually that many of these huge things, it's like an arcane science, it's like sorcerers go, go together and go, how are we going to make this so that we have this thing that's like 100,000 liters, right? It doesn't get bacterial infections or like we have a bunch of sugar in there. Uh, we don't want other bacteria getting in there and doing bad things. How do we run that and how do we run that successfully and like feed millions of people out of one bioreactor, right? Uh, and so most people haven't looked into that, but we did. Right? We we're like, oh, okay. Well, how do we how do we scale these products? How do we scale, you know, the Kanye burgers and the, le and the, the you know less delicious yeah. options, the post animal buy kind because Kanye is also an animal. We're all animals. So uh, how do we how do we how do we get to that point where um, you know we can scale that? And what we found was really interesting. So over a period of 15 years, if you start, let's say it's a thousand dollars per per pound for let's say a meatball, right? Over 15 years. The, the cost drops to often below a dollar per pound, under a dollar per pound. So what that means is you can feed protein to even the poorest people in the world and sell it to them profitably. You can build a profitable enterprise selling to people who can live on dollars a day, right? And they can eat the same standard that we eat. And the best part about it is it's about 20x more efficient, right? So less water, less energy, less resources, like let's say the uh, Brewing the, the egg whites, right? You take you take a bunch of egg white proteins, like five to ten. You 
you, you grow them in yeast, you, it looks like a clear liquid, you mix them up, it congeal and they become egg white. Super weird, right? But that's biology, right? And so you do that and you can, at scale, you could feed millions of people for dollars, right? And so we're super excited about where this is going because we think it means that seven plus billion people on this planet will be able to eat, like us. And we'll have a, an environmental footprint that's hopefully 20x less than us. And there are some really severe health implications as high fructose corn syrup and other sugars are bad for us, but yeah. whereas you guys have discovered this lettuce. So yes. Go ahead and yeah, talk. Yeah. So, 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 miraculum. Right? Who, who here is familiar with the miracle berry? Say aye. aye. Oh, okay, aye. All right, oh, the question. Okay. Who has taken the miracle berry and who has done the weirdest thing with miracle berry? Uh, oh, oh, I'm <laughs> 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 Is but, the miracle berry, berry like a type of cereal? It, it could be like Captain Crunch. Yeah, yeah. Crunch berries, miracle berries. Miracle berries. Yeah, little little uh, yeah. marshmallows. You sound like you're someone trying to sell me a drug that I don't know about. I, I was I was once a drug dealer. Were you really? Yeah, I was. <laughs> Let's jump into that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got a story. You you took the miracle berry. Yes. What happened? You were smiling like crazy. <laughs> oh, you can talk. What are you? What? Why? He's like, I know that. Oh, uh, well, now <laughs> the story got really good now. <laughs> in the biblical sense. Is this like a miracle the right there? What's going on here? <laughs> Show us pictures. What yeah. happened? What happened? Did the Miracle Berry ghost you or something? What happened here? Yeah, no, I went to, uh, I went to his lab and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't do dungeons. It's like showtime after midnight. Alright. Good night. Nobody calls apartment. Yeah. Yeah, there's all sorts of creepy stuff down there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we, he was like, do I some flavor tripping? I was like, oh. Uh -huh. All right. What is going on here? Flavor trip. You are evil. What is going on? Here? So, 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 what does what does Miracle Berry do to you? Miracles. That's right. Oh, oh Eureka! But what yeah. does it do? Ah, okay. What does it actually do physiologically to your body? Can we still give her one? Can we? I think. I think. Yeah. Eureka! Eureka! Yeah. 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 So we, we've got a uh, okay. We've got someone that understands. We, we've got we've got a couple from Lens Crafters who understand. Does it bind to the sour receptor on your tongues? The diver. You got it. Wow. And you got it. And so it essentially creates an artificial taste bud, right? And this is the crazy part. And the artificial taste bud turns sour into sweet. So cool. I had this at a party. You no idea where it was. <laughs> no, no. Now you know. Now you know. So, 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 what did uh, Miraculex do with this? Uh, they uh, great job, by the way. Excellent. I, I love. I love other fellow nerdy scientists like myself out there in the audience. So, uh, so, uh, so, what did what did Miraculex do? So that's the name of the company, Alan. Uh, he he realized. So, uh, Miracle Berry comes from. West Africa, right? It's in the jungles of West Africa. Uh, it grows really, really slow. Like it could take a year to grow one berry, right? So, wow. so it's crazy slow. Can, but, I, can I ask why it takes a year? To grow? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Okay. And, and there's even more of a mystery. It's a miracle. It is a miracle. <laughs> and, and, and here's here's even more of a, of a mystery. Guess what? What? Only upper primates can taste the sweetness. Only, only chimpanzees and humans. That's it. What? Dogs, and primates, cats, huh? and pigs, and everything else. It doesn't taste sweet. We they tested it. People have tested. I have tested it, but it, it's to do it's to do with our taste buds. So it's actually it's a it's a protein machine that sits on top of our taste buds and and turns our sour taste bud into tricks it into becoming a sweet taste bud, right? So, so other animals have have different different taste buds. So, so the dung has areas that that are tender sour. So That's right. It goes to that area, and then it's like, oh, suddenly it's sweet. So sour is sweet. So so the crazy thing is that we humanity scientists think that the miracle berry evolved 
in the cradle of civilization, right, West Africa, evolved with us. And in fact, probably evolved before us, with us. So while we were still like chimpanzee-like, yeah. before we split from chimpanzees, right? Evolutionarily, right? So that's like this crazy thing. So the question is, we don't know the answer to this. I like that you like, did, like made sure we knew evolutionarily and not like through a nasty divorce. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we split, we just couldn't get along with chimpanzees, yeah. they had a different lifestyle, yeah. right? Judge <laughs> Julian. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so... No. You know, oh, divorce court. It's not sure. I, I, used to, I used to be addicted to divorce court. I liked, I liked really? Divorce court. Yeah. Is that the drug that you were dealing? That was the drug that I was miserably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, what do they use the berries for? So, so in, in West Africa, it's it's well known sweetener for like sour things. So if you have like yogurts that have been fermented and things that like, taste kind of sour, they put it in, and they like drink it, and it's like a sweet yogurt, right? And so this is well known in West Africa, but because it's really hard to grow outside of West Africa, it's like really slow, really hard. Uh, they they basically you know you, you can't really grow it anywhere else. There are a few farms that, that try and grow it. Uh, so what Alan did at Miraculex uh, with his co-founder Elohim. Uh, is they uh, they transform lettuce, right? So they turn the lettuce into protein factories for miraculum. Mm. And now lettuce grows real fast. And so now they have this protein production factory using lettuce. And so the crazy part is that miraculum is a zero zero calorie sweetener essentially, right? But it tastes sweet. So you could take like lemon lemons, pour it into water, squeeze it. And then put, and then either take miraculin or like put it in there, and it tastes like sweet lemonade, and there's no sugar. Yep. Man, I have never ordered a drink at a at a <laughs> diner at a restaurant. You can just squeeze it in there, and it gets a sweet lemonade. Sweet lemonade. So wait, so if that's a sweetener, is it? A, have they already made it into a sweetener we can buy? Yeah. 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 So so so. It, he has it in the lab. You guys want to come and taste it? Come by. Swing by yeah, your place you late at night. Yeah. I get it. Day night. Yeah. <laughs> talking about. I, I gotta do what I gotta do to get that miraculous. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right here. <laughs> so much I've done in my life to get sweeteners. Yeah. How did we not accidentally make that extinct already? I feel like that's something humanity would have done. Yes. Well. We did, luckily. Like, Yay, we're not that awful We're, we're not that, well, it's in the jungles, right? So it's like the jungles of West Africa. Oh, okay, so we were too lazy to make it We extinct. were kind of lazy. We were kind of like, ah, it's kind of effort to go in there. It's like under the canopies. It's like, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. a, is that involved with that uh, that animal that uh, that shits out the coffee uh, beans <laughs> that people are eating? The cat. Oh, the cat. Which is technically an animal, I think. Okay. How does that that's taste, Ryan? Right? That's uh, probably, probably miraculous. Probably delicious, with, with or without the you know the, the juices that come out. With the miraculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That little miraculous, it makes miraculous. it taste a little sweeter. You know, if you're into that. So you know, with something like you know, Miraculin and the berries and everything, and it having all, you know, when it, I was wondering like what happens politically, you know, with the land and you know trying to acquire these things. Is it made it like difficult in West Africa? Uh, you know, you know, you know. So, yeah, yeah. So so here here's the thing, right? It's it's code ultimately. So so we've moved into an era where like once you sequence something, it's just like ones and zeros. It's A G C T C. It's bases, right? It's DNA. And so we can synthesize that chemically. And so it's just data. So they just share data. It's literally, uh, they synthesized it out of uh, a publication that was published that was free for anyone that well, free for anyone that had access to that data. So you're saying we can't oppress poor people with miraculous. We can't no. do that? It's available for everyone. Well, Ryan, Ryan, is, Ryan and Indy Bio are actually growing this yep, yes. inside of their office. So San Francisco is growing this, right? So. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So San Francisco, there we go. It's a big deal. It is. Another way to be snobby. All right. <laughs> Put a little, little bit of miraculin in uh, your soylent, and then we've got, we've got a lot win. of miraculin. Right. <laughs> yeah, question? I heard that the uh, effect of that barrier or whatever lasts for quite a while. Yeah, it's like 30 minutes to an hour. So it's not like an SPS. But proteins, when they get really hot, they do what's called denaturing, right? So the protein, mis it, it changes its shape. The moment you drink a hot tea, it releases your ta it releases the it releases your tongue. It no longer sits on your tongue. It lets go, boom, off. And it's it's called denaturing. So that's that's what happens like when you when you overheat something and it spoils. That that's what's happening. You're denaturing the protein. 
One, one example is when you have white, egg white, when you get even to the white of your eye. That's right. That's exactly right. Yep. yep. Wait, what was that? What? And <laughs> egg white, like when you eat it, it does yeah. white. And yes. Solid. It's the same thing, but uh, white of the eyes are made of the teenage protein. My eyes are made of eggs. <laughs> yeah, it's just getting more and more profound. Just squeeze a little out, right? You know, right, right it must be yoga. Yeah, yeah. You're crushing that. You are crushing that. Oh my that. god. When's wow, the book coming the out? The audience is like the Do you want to start, you want, you want to start shouting on your gigs this week? <laughs> We we can go everywhere. We're we're biologists, right? We like that. Yeah. We, we we fear no no body part. We fear no 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 fluid, no tissue. So uh, Ryan, don't cook your let's, eyes. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, um, so maybe let's formulate a question around uh, parsing the human genome to figure out how we can create the post animal bioeconomy further. All right. Faster. So 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 let's 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 unravel that, right? So so. Should we talk about the human genome, or should we talk yes. about, yes? <laughs> all right, all right, so, human genome? Sure. All right, so who knows how many genes we have in the human genome, and which do you think is the most important? Which genes? Like, Ooh, he's doing like, our job for us. Right? <laughs> is it six? Uh, that's pretty close. Is it, it's more than six. It's a few least, little variants. At least like six. six. It's at least six. At least six yeah. genes. All right. Yeah. So we're creating a window. Yeah. It's, it's like six you. Lego bricks, right? We made made out of six genes. <laughs> any takers? Any takers? Yeah. Anyone want to say how many how many genes do we have in the human genome? And how many did we, okay? Here we go. How many genes do we have, and how many did we think before we sequenced the human genome? Mm. Oh, what's the difference between a gene and the chromosome? So a gene is a single coding sequence that codes for a protein, right? I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, giving some size dimensions yeah. to it. And then a chromosome is, is, is a, a sequence of different genes that are connected and they become, like you see like the X chromosome and the Y chromosome, if you burst open a cell, you can still see it with an optical microscope. You can actually see them, like the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. But they're, they're highly concentrated DNA. You would normally be able to see it, but it's like super concentrated. It's, a, it's like a superstructure. Yeah, totally packed. Yeah, so it's like a protein machine. All right, let's okay. take those guys over here. I think your first uh, your thing was how many pairs or, or uh, alleles are there? Genes, genes, genes. Nine point eight times ten to the uh, six million three hundred thousand. Oh, oh, all right. Thanks so for taking being, my answer. You're, you're being very clever. <laughs> you said so you, uh, you said six. In fairness, he, yeah, he did say he, did, he included six, right? It's actually nine point eight. There we go. Now put it. So you're being very clever there. So what you're this answering? This lady's arm is gonna. Oh, fall it's off. gonna fall off. She's I can dying. Smell She's it. dying. So we're gonna move on to her. But what you're answering is a very interesting question. You're, so you're answering another question. How many bases? How many discrete units? I.e. A, G, C, T, C. Do we have right? The ones and zeros of the human body. Yes. So that's the question that you answered, which is good. But it's not how many genes. So I have a feeling. Oh, where are we going? Where are we going? Let's go. Oh, yeah. Where are we going? Just go. Alan, she's, Alan, she's you're, you're, you're steering the ship. Alan, she's Alan steering the ship. She's got ball. good arm genes. Right. So in the haplo genome, we have three billion bases, and the number always is always going up. But the last that I've heard, we think it's like twenty-five to thirty thousand genes. On the money. Uh, good job, Eureka. Um, Eureka. Uh, now, now, extra, extra, extra bonus. Before 2000, before we sequenced the human genome, how many do we think we had? They probably thought it was like 100,000. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, you're pulling out the money again. <laughs> yes. All the money. Woo! Buy her to your lab, man. <laughs> Give her those flavor flakes. So, 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 so here, here's extra credit. I have a feeling you like extra credit, right? So we're going to do the extra credit game. Right? So, so, right? You like this? <laughs> so, so you guys are, of course, interrupt me at, you know, come, come, at, yeah. come, come at me, come, come at me. When come you want us to interrupt you? Yeah, oh, always. <laughs> I like that. So, um, all right, so here's the extra credit game. So why did we think we had 100,000 genes? Because we figured we're so complex <laughs> and you have things like corn that have I forget the number for corn, but corn has way more genes than we have, and so we figured that we probably, because we're so complex, we must have more genes, and that's not exactly how it works. What about alternate splicing? Well, that too. <laughs> 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 which, which means not every exome is going to end up in that protein. That's true. That's true. So, alternate splicing, who here knows what? Alternate splicing is. Well, it's just oh, like, we know it. 
Alan, you take control. All right, guys, come on, comedian, or come on, audience. Anyone besides the biology major? No, she's got a hand up over there. We got a shot. We got to take her hand. Okay, so altered slicing. You have a mRNA that is produced in its entirety, but then it's cut in different ways to create the mature. Uh, mRNA, which then yeah. That's nice. Multiple different proteins, depending on how it's processed. And now, who here did not understand what that what, means? Mature? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is mature? <laughs> what is, well, what is mature? Demystify that. Yeah, de what? Should we, let's Should we add a little, a little demystify? Fine, demystify. Oh, you're, right. you're like, I want that extra credit. <laughs> Show off. I always get the A. <laughs> First <year. laughs> Like, you you gonna give her none of those drinks? Yeah. Everyone's <laughs> having diarrhea. Give her some money, man. Yeah. man. She's like, look at this show, Lynn. It's loud and gassy. That's it's how we like it. Like it. <laughs> it's just Not water. Excellent. It's just water when she goes. Like, it's water and laxative. You have the same. So, so shall we demystify? Please. All right. So. What happens, so you have, you have what, what is DNA, right? And then you, you have what's called RNA, right? It, it's, it's a transient form of information, right? RNA goes between the new, I won't get into too, too much of the specifics, but it basically goes from, from uh, where we store the information to, okay, now, we've, now the cell needs to make it. So it's a, it's a bit of information, it's a coding sequence that gets shot off to somewhere that makes protein, right? That place that makes protein, what it does is it actually slices up the RNA in different ways and recombines them. So it's like taking a bunch of Legos. So one gene is not just one gene. One gene is a series of, uh, a, a series of pieces that get sliced up. Some genes are just one protein. Some genes are pieces of multiple proteins. So it's kind of confusing, right? You look at the human genome, or you look at a cell and you go, oh my God, we've got like 100,000 you know, proteins, but some of them are actually pieces of genes, not full genes themselves that have been recombined. It's like really crazy. Once we start to look into biology and what happens, it starts to get like super crazy. And there's weird stuff we don't even know, right? Like there are things that we humanity don't understand, right? When we look into a cell and we look at DNA, like recently we found out that uh, it's not just DNA, right? It's the structure of the DNA that can also be used as coding. Some viruses actually use the three-dimensional structure as another language to code for something else. Oh, is that like that protein folding? Yeah, it's, it, it's kind of DNA folding. So, the, so, so we didn't know that there was a hidden language within the folds of the DNA. I was aware of that. You were aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say anything. That's good. Don't want to steal your fire, man. DL. Kept it on the DL. So that's that's important. I think we got. It. When, when we're when we're recreating things, then like earlier on with the meatball. Yeah, I'm, I'm pro that, by the way. Okay, awesome, pro that. Yeah, yeah, ball. Yeah. Yeah. Pro ball. Yeah, pro ball. You're a real American. I have meat balls, too. But when you say that it's indistinct... <laughs> when you say that it's indistinguishable from a, a, a natural meatball, mm -hmm. do we know that yet, though? If, yeah. if the same gene can be chopped and reorganized and made into a different... Exactly. Okay, so, so roughly, right, yeah. if you were to sequence it, right, just like we sequence the human genome, you can actually sequence a pig genome or, or a cow genome or whatever else. If you sequence the, the cells in that meatball, they will be identical to a pig, right, the pig that it came from. It'll be identical. I think he's asking you have to sequence the mRNA, though, to make sure it's... Oh, but that's different. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Understand what he was asking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why? Why? Why is it different? Why is the mRNA in different cells different? Who has the answer for that? I'm oh, going to see that. That. <laughs> this is like a science rom com. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Deliverance, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sequence you like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can insert it with a little CRISPR. If you want some pig in you, it's like we can just do that. <laughs> when do we start filming? Alright, I'll just come down. Come down. You can go up there in the cheap seats and stuff. Come down here. There's a seat right here. Come on, come in with your, with your, with your date that. cousin, dude, right? I don't know who he is. The Verizon guy. Come on down, man. You the smartest person here? You know what I mean? Nah, he, he, I mean, he can yeah. close, you know what I mean? But come on, man. He said yes to this gig. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so I don't know the answer to that question, but I have something else I want to ask. All right. Um, take the particular genes from the shoulder of the pig or whatever, and you start culturing these. Are you only able to grow that exact type of muscle tissue that you took it from? Right question. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so basically, it, it depends, right? You can culture things together. 
right? So, so this links in with, uh, with like regenerative medicine, right? So tissue engineering, all this stuff, like growing whole organs, all, like growing whole bodies one day, hopefully. We're not there yet. We're not even there to like whole organs. If you try and grow an organ right now, like a heart, you fill it full of blood and like it bleeds, right? <laughs> so you, because it's so, so high and like it, it falls apart. There are holes in the heart and it's just goes and, and the blood comes out. It's but too liberal. It's very, it's very, it's a big heart. I like that. Fuck <laughs> yourself. <laughs> There's no blood in the Trump heart. <laughs> Zero blood. It's just dry thing. It's, it's all dry. It's, it's all dry inside. It's uh, chewy. It's, like it's, jerky. Coag it's coagulated. Yeah, it's, it's coagulated. coagulated. Yeah, there we go. So, 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 but you're right. Like, if you only take muscle cells, they're called myoblasts, right? And uh, myo, uh, that's meaning for muscle in Latin, right? Uh, you take you take myoblasts, and all you're growing is myoblasts. That's all you get. You get muscle cells. So, so the taste difference. You will have a taste difference because most like pork has fat in it, right? That's what gives it the flavor. So you can either add the fat back in, right, with healthy plant to plant fats and various other things, or you can grow the fat cells that make fat from the pig. Like make a braid out of that. You got it. Yeah, and you bring it back in. I think we've got. Are you partnered with any chefs or restaurants? Or <laughs> You're like guys for everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have any partners? <laughs> I live in San Francisco. No. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, are you partnered with, with some chefs? Yeah. yeah. Which ones? We have a bunch of them. I can't remember the names. But... <laughs> yeah, they must not be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the back. What do they do? Burger King, McDonald's. Oh, mom and pop. So how how about something a little bit more today? Because the organ growth is a little bit tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So so what about things like uh, gene slicing and how does that help us solve diseases currently like okay. Alzheimer's? Okay. So so uh, with Alzheimer's at the moment actually doesn't help us. So 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 how many of you are familiar with? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Alzheimer's is a whole mess. Tangles in the head is a mess. There's my little joke for the scientists in the audience. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, the little tangles, tau tangles and beta amyloid, it's like kind of crusty in the head. <laughs> okay. Okay, that, 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 that worked. Oh, I didn't know you were going to do an hour up here. I was just trying to make jokes, right? So, you got that guy. <laughs> Um, so, so, yeah, yeah, so, so, so CRISPR. How many of you are familiar with CRISPR? All right, Let's, should we ask a question? Wait, CRISPR. Yeah, right. What is CRISPR Cas9? Oh. CRISPR what? <laughs> Put your head down for now. <laughs> no, good job. It's very tasty, it's very crispy. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, have an anyone, anyone else want to take us yeah, out? There's some scientists here. There's some scientists in the mix. Go, let's go, let's go. The ones, oh, you, hand, you raise your hands. Let's hear an answer from people. <laughs> yes. Kind of, kind of. There's, it needs a little more. That's bingo. Woo! Eureka! Yeah. Yeah. And, and why, why is it changing everything? Uh, easy to use the first time. Okay, but, but what's easy to use? Like, it's like, you guys, you guys can see that. <laughs> <laughs> That was not a joke, right? Hey, <laughs> we're trying what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he so drinks soil with every day. He does drink soil with every day. It's good for his digestion. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to hate on soil because they, they have great GMO ads. You should check them out if you haven't. Google their GMO ads. I love them. They put them all over LA. And, uh, We've been sponsored by soil. Yes, exactly. I totally want to be sponsored by soil. I want like a, I, I just want to have like, Buckets of soil. They need to not call it soylent. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a mistake in branding. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, the, the bros kind of like it. The tech bros kind of like it. The name? Them. I think so. Because of the movie reference? Yeah, who, who likes the name Soylent? No. <laughs> there, there's got to be someone here. Like soylent Green. Yeah, so <laughs> it's people. A vegan child <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> It's like you're going to soil something. Gra grass fed, right? They're grass fed. <laughs> what would you rename it? Because it, it just, it's a terrible name. I, I like the original name, Slim Fast. <laughs> <laughs> Joke number two! Let's go out and let's have some open mics, man! Yeah. <laughs> this is like insurance for young people. Yeah. 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 Hey, are you young and want diarrhea? <laughs> you should call it unsure. So, 
So, so I'm a planer. Yeah, so the molecular scissors, I think that's a really, but what's the changed everything, scissors. right? Like, why, why does this change it? What, like, we could cut DNA before, right? And then in the late 1970s, we could cut DNA, and we made insulin, right? Before, before late 1970s, people were going to abattoirs and slaughterhouses, and like getting pig and cow pancreases and like squeezing them, taking the juice out, and the juice was actually in there. There was some insulin, some proteins. Is that they were taking that. Thing, right? Oh yeah, and then they were injecting it. Oh. it diabetics, oh, type two, wow. type one diabetics were injecting it to live every day, huh. and they'd inject it and they'd get like trails of red because oh. their bodies would react, right? Like it's pig and cow proteins you're injecting. It's like going. And injecting something from like a steak or something into your arm. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's and they used to die young, real young, wow. right? Bucket list. But after the 1970s, Genentech brought uh, in the early 1980s. Slut bucket list. A slut bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> the only bucket list. But in the early 1980s, Genentech brought the first recombinant bro protein to market. That means the first GMO derived uh, recombinant protein, which was insulin. So diabetics no longer had to shoot up bits of pancreas or enzymes from abattoirs and slaughterhouses. They could actually just brew some, like we brew beer, and then just clean it out and it was human. That was the beginning. Some insulin IPA. Insulin IPA. <laughs> you, could actually, you could actually drink that. that that's like a thing. You might... I, I apparently drink anything. Oh, okay. no. well, yeah. We might be able to spin you up. Uh, I, I, <laughs> flavor Flav, yeah. lab later on. So, so the question, I think, the question is, why does it matter? Why did CRISPR change everything? Ooh, there we go. It's a printer sized device and it can be portable. A, a printer sized device? What, what is? The whole CRISPR is a small... CRISPR-Cas9 is a printer sized device. Yeah, it's and, what, ha and what happens inside of it? It does the editing inside. The editing inside? Yeah. And like how? I guess you put the... DNA Wait, do you not know? You wanted to build it? No, I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> Printer size, Chris Casper nine system. I've heard of. I want. I want to hear more. I like it. <laughs> what else can gene therapy with CRISPR do? What problems can it solve? All sorts of stuff. So talk about that. So like anywhere where you have a single gene mutation, right? If you know where that mutation is, you can start targeting. So let's say you have a mutation, a loss of function gene. Everyone get what that is? So is it something like a motor loss of function or like? A yeah, it's like it's like if I take my phone and like smash the screen, right? The phone kind of still works, but I can't see shit. So <laughs> it's it's a loss of function phone. Yeah, right? High schooler. So we can take a CRISPR to a cell phone. Yo, bro, I can't see shit with my without my CRISPR. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so when you have a gene like that, that's all fucked up, doesn't work. You can insert it. And so you can actually have gain of function. And so all of a sudden, you know, someone who has a terrible genetic disease can suddenly live a normal life, right? So, so, so we're gonna see that transform. And there's even crazier things that we can do with that. So, so we can program T cells. Who's from what, what is a T cell? Awesome. That's a Eureka moment. Eureka! Eureka. T cell is uh, whatever this guy just said over here. Is. <laughs> I don't think the rest of the audience can hear what people. Oh, okay. Listen. So what? What? So should we should we repeat what a T cell is? So a T cell is the hunter killer cell of the body. So our immune system, right, constantly has these cells. They're like little nano machines, right? They're living nano machines that are constantly combing combing through your body looking for for things that shouldn't be there. Are you are you me or are you not me? If you're not me, I'm gonna fucking kill you, right? <laughs> so. It tears it apart. You're intense, bro. I'm very intense. You're like trying to meet me. Is CRISPR shaped like a shape gun? Like a gun? <laughs> yeah, it's it's like far away, different genes. So what, what's that? The uh, it's not shaped like a gun. It seems so violent. No, no, it tears it apart. So oh, I've, so I've actually violent. watched. I've watched a T cell tear apart under a microscope. Right, you can see it. It's, it's really cool. If you haven't seen it, like Google it. So cool. It's really cool, That's right? Really cool. So is this, so the T cell receives a mug shot, like we were talking about. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. But it receives a mug shot. So it's basically it's the same kind of thing. You insert the mug shot in, right? So you basically say, let's say you've got I don't know breast cancer, right? Not a funny topic, fortunately. Uh, but let's say you got. <laughs> Yo. Got a joke here? Yeah, you got like <laughs> <cancels> in here. <laughs> no, just keep, keep, keep all, all dry, all dry. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so, uh, so let's say you have breast cancer, you have metastatic breast cancer, it's really fucked up, you're gonna die, right? It sucks, right? It really sucks. Uh, so, so you basically, you have someone that survived breast cancer, metastatic breast cancer with the exact same mutation that you have, exactly the same mugshot, right? Exactly the same mugshot. The genetic sequence that you, that T cell used would work with anyone else, right? Who has that same genetic mutation, right? So you basically, you take someone that survived and you take their T cell and the, the T cells have their own unique DNA inside of them. Their TCR, the T cell receptor, there's a DNA sequence that codes for that specifically, right? It has its own unique sequence, right? You take that, you essentially copy it, right? And you insert it into the lady who has breast cancer, metastatic breast cancer, who's going to die. You insert it into her T cells, and in theory, it should go around and kill all of the bad cancer cells. So what size breast did she have? <laughs> Side note, I'm imagining what you're talking about. It can't be very variable. Okay, got it. It can't be very You know, guys, yeah, that's, that's a good attempt. Too. I like that. Yeah. I know, exactly. <laughs> so is that like, I was watching 60 Minutes the other day. Yeah. We were talking about taking um, uh, what's it, uh, uh, polio, and good Google. Yeah. 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 So that, that's a different, that's a different, um, that's a different uh, strategy, but that strategy also works. So, so that's activating the immune system. You're using polio to basically say, polio is here, come and get me, right? And basically it's like a big red flag, the immune system sees it, and then just kills everything around it, including the, the bad cancer cells. That's different to reprogram it. Exactly, yeah, it, it like switches on, because cancer cells do fucked up stuff in the body, right? They like hide. Yeah. They, you know, they like take your grandma's skin and put it on, go high on your grandma, and it's like, that's not my grandma, right? <laughs> Those signs of the land stuff. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm a pretty weird dude. Was your grandma not your grandma growing up? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, let's, uh, let's jump to, um, let's talk about using DNA as a computational and storage substrate. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Who here uses DNA for computation? <laughs> on the weekends. On the weekends. <laughs> so let's demystify that a little bit yeah. further. So what would it mean for us to use DNA as computational substrate? So, uh, or how can you... Who here is a programmer? All right. Oh, good. 50%. All right, good. Is that the right word you use, programmer? Or do you guys like be called engineers? What's, what's your... Or gentrifier. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so it's programming, right? Like ultimately, what we have in us is not ones and zeros, but it's A G C T, right? So it's like four bases. I've had a zero inside. You, you had a zero. <laughs> It, 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 it's, it's a coding language. So there's, there was this professor. He's actually, he looks like a professor. His name is George Church. He does all sorts of crazy stuff. What did you say? He looks like a professor? Oh, he totally looks like a professor. He has the big... You make it sound like he's ugly. The way you say it. No, no, he's very distinguished. He's from Boston, very distinguished. But he, he wants to bring back Willie Madison. He Mathis. doesn't talk like you is what you're no, saying. No, he does not talk like me. No, no. I, I, I'm probably offensive to most of the, the professors I talk to. <laughs> So, so he, uh, he's at Harvard too, so he's very distinguished, right? And uh, he wants to bring woolly mammoths back, he wants to, uh, to write the human what? genome, right? Like an entire, like just literally like, boom, I'm gonna write your genome. I'm gonna take a copy of your genome, write it out here, clone you, and then make another you, right? It'll be your baby you, right? But the weird thing is like, even hearing With that, the I, thought they, I, would, I would have thought they were already doing that. What? <laughs> No, Do Dolly, Dolly the yeah. sheep? What, what happened with Dolly? She died. What? <laughs> Your middle of the scene will die, my friend. <laughs> I like how you looked over. She, she died. <laughs> <laughs> that was like 20 years ago. I mean, she was tasty. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so this guy wants to bring back Willie Mammoth? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so he wants to bring back William Mammoth, but what he did was he wrote a book called Regenesis, right? So Regenesis, what he did was he wrote the book, 
Great book, by the way. Read it. It's really cool. It has all these crazy ideas in it. What you can do with biology. Uh, and then he was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write it in DNA. And then he was like, I'm going to write it in DNA and I'm going to copy it. And he made more copies of it than any book in the uh, U.S. Uh, was it U.S. Library of Congress, right? Uh, and then and then that was in a little vial. Right? He had a little vial. He made like more copies of his book than anything else because he basically coded it into a bacteria. Right? He coded. He came up with a way of putting an algorithm for AGCTC could be read by a machine, and and then he just programmed it that way. And so he just made copies. He just let the bacteria divide, fed them sugar, they divided, and he had copies. So he programmed DNA. It's the most. It's the most information rich substance we have on this planet. How, how, how big was it? How compact was it? Uh, so it was, it was like a little, like a little vial, right? For one book. For, for, for more information than, than is in all so the libraries. So this guy is a self-published uh, yeah. novelist. You need more information, <laughs> copies of the same book. It's like, it's like any book you want as long as it's one for Genesis. And what, and what does that mean that, for that, us in the that, future? That basically means that there will be a huge, actually, is that a good question to ask everyone else? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Alan? So what does it mean for our future to be able to write in our, in, a D, in our DNA a computational substrate? This guy looks like he's just dying to answer right oh. there. Let's ask him. Well, I imagine the whole internet was bacteria or, every, or everything we keyboard? ever know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that, though, the whole internet of bacteria. Yes. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. So and anything we possibly know can be encoded as bacteria. So we won't have computers anymore. It will be running on genetic material. Or, yeah. or whatever. Uh, that's a pretty wild thought. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, it's cool. Should we give them uh, just because of the coolness? I think the coolness. Yeah. I think get a eureka. Eureka! Yeah. <laughs> the young lady, the young lady over there has. Uh, okay, let's go. Look. Yes. <laughs> Okay, Wait, no. is she, is she talking about zombies? Mm -hmm. I think she wants zombies. Walking Dead. Man, you work, you work. Man, right here, me and you. Yeah, yeah. I'll follow you on Twitter, man. You could, you could be the next generation zombie researcher. That sounds pretty like, cool, right? How old are you? Like How old are you? Man, you are. Man, you are. I wish my friends were as smart as you. Man. <laughs> With, with this she has guy, smart parents. Really, her parents brought her to a science You're a great show. parents. True. You don't even have to worry about her. You don't have to pay for college. This girl's gonna be. Oh. Uh, Wait, so are we not friends or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you got my letter. <laughs> so what was her question? So the question is, uh, if we can copy DNA, does that mean we can bring people back from the dead? Yes. 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 What? Does it mean yes? Okay, tell me. Someone who said yes. Wait, we can get some World War Z out there? I, like, I like this. But we're not like eating them, right? Who, said, not the who said yes? Talk to me. Talk to me. Alan, choose. Choose. <laughs> or wait, let's go up here. Yeah. yeah. We could grow them in bats. <laughs> I like that. That's wait, what did you say? You can grow them in what? Serial killer grow them? No, wait, wait, you said you can grow them in bats? Yeah. Ooh. You get the DNA and then you do like the meat thing. He talks about it. <laughs> <laughs> and a little cool. Like is, you got a product called Soylent again. I'm going to turn into Alan in it. It just takes the... Yeah, I mean, you can, you can, okay, I think there's a lot of excitement around this, Alan, how, how? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see Couldn't you get, like, the physical, theoretically speaking, like, if the DNA works, should we get an exact physical replica of them, but aren't, like, memories and experiences not, like, in your DNA, like, your things that are learned over time, so you essentially, like, would have a zombie that would make you a zombie, but it wouldn't be the same person. Like, they could take on an entirely different identity. So I can bring back my ex-girlfriend, she won't remember anything. <laughs> so I could, I could bring Tupac back? Bring back. <laughs> Damn, this but, is but, crazy shit, shit, man. He may not be a rapper. Yeah. I don't give a Maybe fuck. Like a I could I I yeah. Tupac the accountant. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, let's jump up here. Do you, do you still want to ask? No. Uh, isn't it a little more complicated than that, though? Because if you just get 
Um, uh, the DNA in all of our cells is the same, but you have to get them to express differently to form cells. It doesn't seem like from one cell, of, for example, a woolly mammoth, you can construct an entire woolly mammoth, right? Mm -hmm. Not yet. I, I, I have a question, too, which I've yeah. been kind of wanting to ask, which is about um, the computational thing that you were talking about with DNA. How did they not get the right number of genes before? Because was it, how did they determine the actual number of genes from our DNA? Did they create proteins, or how, what did they guess wrong, or so, is it not just the combination? So, so just to quickly answer that question, I'm not sure. Right, so, so I think what they did was they looked at, at a cell, and they were like, how many proteins are in the cell? And they're like, oh, there's like 100,000 different types of protein. So there must be 100,000 different types of genes, right? And it turns out that one gene can make more than one protein. We didn't know that, right? We weren't really sure of that, right? And so therefore, when one gene can make more than one protein, all bets are off, right? To how many genes you actually have. So should we keep going with this? Uh, uh, let's, let's get, let's, or should we, should should we, we answer that? Should we, we answer that? We'll go ahead, yeah. Okay, so quick one. So uh, what happens, you take the genetic material, you grow it out, let's say you can make a perfect clone. Anyone know of twins? Yes. Are they the same people? No. 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 Okay, that is the same thing. <laughs> right? You take the same genetic material, different life circumstances, you have different people. 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 Right. You could have two public accountants. You could have two public accountants. Would yeah. this involve bacteria? Wait, what? Would this involve yeah. bacteria? <laughs> Who said that? Would this involve bacteria? I'm going to follow you on Twitter. What do you mean? <laughs> Fuck with you, man. Like, this is a great show. So if you brought somebody back with bacteria, then that would be like Easter. That would be. Easter. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a little. You know, let's stand up for that. You know, that is. You got, you got that for free. I don't know how much you're joking. Wait, clown hair. But you can have more yeast. I mean, we can always have more yeast in yeah, Natasha. Yeah, yeah. Yeasting Natasha. It's a doctor visit. That's what fucking all those So we'll uh, we'll jump into questions in a few minutes, um, but let's uh, let's do let's do another uh, subject. Um, this one's uh, one another one of Ryan's talks. Uh, he talks about connecting neurons with protein coated chips, and that being the future of yeah. Prosthetics. So. So what happens at the end of Moore's law? For those of you that, that are programmers, right? When when does Moore when does Moore's law end? By the way, when the electrons get too close together and you start getting quantum effects. Ah, so so we have a physical limit to how many transistors you can put on a chip, right? When when does that when when is that when does that happen? Five Next year. Nanometers. So so when 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 do we get tomorrow? <laughs> Not quite tomorrow. Kind of there. We're getting yeah. close, right? So most, most people are saying like five to ten years. That's it. You'll, you'll no longer, the thing that put this supercomputer in our pocket is going to end. Moore's law is going to end in about five to ten years. We won't be able to fit more transistors on a chip before you get those weird quantum effects. And all of a sudden the material starts doing weird stuff like it should work, but the electron went like, was here, and then it's over there. And you're like, what happened? Right? And it's quantum. You're in the weird world, weird world of quantum where physics doesn't make sense anymore, right? Uh, so what happens at that point? What, where do we go? Quantum computers. Yeah. Build bigger chips. Okay, I like a lot of these answers. So Something what, about quarks. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're, 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 you're like on the next level there. You're on like some sci-fi stuff. You mean speculative fiction? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so quark, quark computation is a neat idea. We're nowhere near that, but it's neat. It's super neat. You have so, a neat idea. You have a great neat idea. You, someone should fund you. Someone should fund you to build, build the vision of the future. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> What's that? Quantum. Quantum. Oh yeah, Schrodinger. Yeah, is the cat dead or alive? Ah, who knows? Quantum. I'll go back to earlier when we talked about. Putting the sequence in a, in a DNA and the yeah. bacteria, couldn't it be possible to, to compute like our brain computes on a biological level? And that would be the next Ooh, thing. Ooh, that's very interesting. Who knows how a neuron works? Who, who knows how the neuron works? Okay, who, who, who wants to go for this? Let's, wants, let's go. Okay, there we go. Okay, our, our CRISPR uh, desktop printer guy. Uh, yeah, All right, I'm looking forward to this one. 
there is one neuron closely not touching but very near to other neuron. Uh, yes. The axon will fire and uh, some particles go to the dendroid and the other neuron will and the same <laughs> sends the signal and the next neuron absorbs the signal. And, uh, and all these are connected but some of them, none of them are touching. Some of the time the signal goes through, some of them the time it doesn't. Okay. And collectively this makes the whole brain. Okay, so who, who understood that? Who didn't understand that? Things are who touching. didn't understand that? Oh, oh, oh! There's everyone. There were a lot of people that understood that. So now you know how to do comp. Now you know how neurons compute. Yeah. Educate me. Educate me. Well, so like we know how the electrical signal is sent. Correct. We know how it's translated to a chemical signal. Correct. The next neuron uptakes the chemical. Correct. Signal and translates it back to chemical. Uh, Correct. Back to electrical. Correct. This is what part don't we know? What's happening inside the neuron? What not? The amount of chemical that sets off the electrical <laughs> signal once it reaches threshold. And Is the information in there? You don't know? <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's go ahead and have up here. Uh, I thought maybe you were looking for the voltage, how there's an action potential. Yeah, I was, I was I was playing around. It was a trick question, but I, I want to see. There might be a scientist that actually can explain it better than I understand it. Yeah, so. let's go ahead up here. Also, we don't know like how, um, if you look at neurophilosophy, like how all those just firings of electrons turn into your own self-awareness yeah. and your ability to use it, what we consider like a soul and stuff Correct. like that. Um, those are questions. Where is the ghost in the machine? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Free will is a myth. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. That's you said. Apparently. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yes. No, but apparently. It's a myth, right, because so if we right. are a collection of things that do things, yeah. then what is free will if it's like a little clunky mechanical thing that works? So I think that this like a printer. We know, how a, <laughs> <laughs> we know how a neuron works, we just don't know how neurons work together. That's a difference. Well, well no, we don't, we, don't really, we don't really know how a neuron does what it does. One neuron eyes up in you already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but where's the information? That is in the card in the card in one euro. But wait, which one? That's what that's what we don't know. So if we <laughs> <laughs> Neuron please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring it, bring the science. <laughs> Alright, neuron rap battle. Yeah. Uh. Uh, all right, so, so I, feel, I feel like Eminem going on stage. Yeah, you, it's my moment. You only got one shot. I've only got one shot. Which neuron is it? So. <laughs> you don't know. We don't know. Eight miles of neuron right now. <laughs> so it's a, it's a bit of a nerdier eight mile, right? <laughs> Which was the movie we all wanted to see. We bust out the vials on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Only, only have half. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, Konaku, right? Konaku neuronal chip, right? So, this is the cool thing about biology. It doesn't matter that we don't know how it works, right? Like, biology is ultimately molecular machines, right? If you think about it, fundamentally, it's a molecular machine that is so complex. It's like, it's like an alien, and it may have an alien put it on this planet. And it just works, right? And so, and when I say it may have, we may have had bacteria. We may not have come from here. We, there may have been this a theory called panspermia. Uh, which sounds sounds like Tell you know more. <laughs> some big galactic beast. Uh, <laughs> Wendy, darling. Yes, impregnated our Gaia, right? So uh, with life, but we don't know. We don't know that panspermia. Yeah. How are these names being names? <laughs> like, is there's, some, there's some nerdy, there's some that's my Tinder ass. profile name. Yeah, it's it's sitting in the lab going, you know, <laughs> Tinder, Groninger, it's all the same to them. They, they get no dates. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so it's really fucking complex, right? It's really, really complex. So complex we don't actually understand it. Like, like uh, IBM does, uh, they, they simulate neurons, right? They're like, oh, we have a neuronal cluster, it's firing. We simulate it for, for like 100 uh, microseconds. And then we're done. That's too much power for a super, a super computer that fills up like uh, a huge warehouse, right? That's it. We can't even do it for a second, right? <laughs> Give me a second of neural time. We don't know what the fuck's going on. We just know the firing patterns or whatever. That's what we can replicate, right? So, so, but just because we don't know how it works doesn't mean we can't use it, right? In the same way that, you know, with... Yeah, 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 it's a, it's a little neuroblast. I'm hitting everyone's little neuroblast here. Sounds like a 90s gun. 
<laughs> so, 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 uh, so, so what Kaneku did was, there's this, this cool guy, Ash, right? Uh, CEO of Kaneku. He basically said, hmm, I'm, uh, I'm a theoretical physicist. I am uh, doing human-machine interface. So he was basically putting machinery into the body. It was getting all gunked up with the immune system, the T cells we talked about earlier. They were like, I'm gonna fuck that shit up. That shouldn't be here. You know, I'm gonna gunk it up. That's what the body does, right? You put something that shouldn't be there, it gunks it up, right? Uh, and so, so he's like, well, instead of doing that, why don't I just take the neurons out and put it into like a chip, a little chip outside. And so he was like, oh, that's cool. I don't have to deal with the immune system anymore, right? And so he was like, all right, I'm gonna do that. So he took, he took a skin cell called a fibroblast, took it out, reprogrammed it, turned it into a neuron, a human neuron, and put it into a chip. And then he was like, oh, this is cool. I can do more of this. And so he was like, okay. So he, did, he put 64 of these onto a chip and then started recording it. He created a, a microfluidics chip that fed, fed the cells, right? And these cells now exist outside of the body and they, they do very primitive computing. Very, very primitive. Like 1960s transistor type stuff. Like you can hardly use it for anything, but it has some use, right? And so, so that's like a real thing, right? Like that was a thing that was done like three months ago, right? Um, and it has really cool applications when you start to imagine about using that for computation. We'll probably get there with biological computation much faster than we'll ever get there with AI. Sorry for all the AI fans. We don't understand non-artificial intelligence. So first we need to understand intelligence and then we might be able to build an artificial intelligence, right? Uh, without understanding it, we can still use neurons, which work. They're all in here. That's how we're all interacting with each other right now. Uh, and we can use those for computational tasks. So, so neat yeah. stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. So first application is actually uh, interesting enough for uh, for battlefield applications. So um, war. Thank God. Yeah, but not not death, but preventing death. So so it turns out that uh, 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 bees. How do they find pollen? They basically buzz around and they can they can smell or they can detect one part per trillion of pollen, and they kind of go over to the flower, and they go and they go and get the pollen, and they go somewhere else. You can actually engineer that into a neuron, and then you have a neuron that senses pollen, or TNT, or gas leaks, and you can put it onto a drone, a normal drone, like a, one that people automatically like drive around. You basically have that, that drone fly to the areas of highest concentration of that thing. So whether it's TNT for battlefield applications, it just hovers above an area of high density, so it saves save soldiers, or it has an area of a high gas leak where it goes and hovers and it's like, hey, there's a gas leak here. Uh, you need to go and go and fix this because it's going to blow up. Oh, yeah, so, cool. Like cool. the alcohol so on my you, breath. You make, a, you make a very good, um, in your talk, you talk about uh, how a dragonfly has about six. It has a lot of neurons, actually, in my talk. So, 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 cool. so the navigational system, it's like hundreds of neurons. Uh, so, so we're not just the navigational system. Uh, but it's only hundreds, right? And so Osh's first chip is 64, 64 neurons, right? So it doesn't take you very long to think how quickly they'll be able to scale because there's no fundamental limit to how quickly you can build, right? It's literally, he has a microfluidics chip that, that can read 25 times better the neuronal signals coming out of neurons, the electrical signals, so fast that when you look at it, you, you, they look like, like these types of waves, but our eyes can't process how quickly they move. Kind of makes sense, right? Like our eyes are not built to process what's going on in here, how quickly it moves. So what, what else, what else are some of the other future applications? Because that was a really good one, right? That's Solving. a really good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so the idea of, so here's a really crazy idea, right? Imagine if you had a wet chip. I, I like to call them wet chips, right? So these are chips that need to be wet because they need to be fed. Uh, but imagine if you had a wet chip that over 20 years time, instead of replacing it like you do with a computer that gets old, with new chips, right, it learns. And so you can have like a self-driving car that you keep the chip because it gets better and better at driving every year. It learns, like we learn, right? How long do our neurons last? What's that? Why not? Oh, the, you, <laughs> I, I guarantee you, once you start spreading intelligence throughout the world, we'll just do more and more and more. You're gonna have your toaster that's gonna be intelligent. You're gonna have, yeah, like your everything will be intelligent. But I don't want my toast all wet. Yeah. No, I'd be a little, a little soggy. <laughs> Put some brain juice on it. <laughs> Very wet chip. Mm -hmm. have, let's, have, let's answer your question up here. Yeah. yeah. So um, I have a question for you all. Um, so we just heard last night uh, from 
found AI scientists. Yep. How uh, they have uh, fully autonomous cars. Yes. And they program two identical vehicles with two uh, identical AIs. And it turns out that two of those vehicles, they uh, they have two really different behaviors. Mm. So one will exhibit an aggressive driving behavior, and then the other one would have more of a conservative driving behavior. So I wonder if that has any, uh, you know, with this talk of, uh, you know, bio, <laughs> like bio neural science being applied. Uh, we're back to twins. Yeah, we're, we're back to twins. It's actually a really interesting question, right? Because as systems get more complex, Right, we have emergent behaviors that, that emerge. Right? Do you, do you know how those how those cars were programmed? Well, we what we do know is they are two identical vehicles, physically speaking. Yep. With two identical AI programs. AI programs. What yeah, about the hardware the environments? Okay. Maybe one's like an Autobot. It's It's high. It was it a good one or a bad one? Well, the Autobots are, Autobots are good. Oh, yeah, Decepticons. Yeah, yeah. Decepticons. Could the other one be a Decepticon? That's coming out a little later. Yeah. Google. All right. <laughs> Don't be evil. <laughs> I want the Decepticon car. It'll get me there faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, just people. knock, knock people knock out of the way. Yeah. That, that's actually a great, great product idea. So, I have a question. If you look into a chip, the collection of transistors which are making it circuit, they are looking for implementing it the algorithms, right? Yeah. So, you know that that particular chip is going to do some function because you know that that algorithm is going to be implemented. Yeah. Now, if you look at a neuron, I see neuron just as a switch, something which passes electricity from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. So, how do you implement an algorithm using neurons? First question. Second question is reliability. Chips with transistors are reliable because we know that in any environment they will sustain. I mean, if I can put them in, at the top of that list, they will sustain, I can put them in the Sahara Desert, they will sustain. What is the reliability of a wind chip? Okay, so, so today, it's not a very reliable system. You have to keep the cells alive, right? So that's a very easy one to answer. So you have to keep feeding the neurons so, the so, so let me ask you a question. How reliable is your brain? Pretty reliable, right? Answer quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you stall out, we're going to put a chip in there. <laughs> put, put some silicon in there. But, I mean, it's a good question, right? How Ultimately, how reliable could neurons be? Pretty reliable. I mean, is it expected that you give food to the chip every day? Like, okay, eat, drink, drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what if you didn't have electricity in a, in a chip, like a silicon chip? Yeah, the <laughs> so so it, it, it's a good question. Now, what the first question again? It was it was the algorithm. Yeah, yeah. You 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 view a neuron as a switch. Yeah, is that you're saying that like a, a neuron's like uh, is just binary, right? It's just either on or off. I see. The neuron is just a piece of wire. So how do you make a piece of wire switch? Like how do you switch it on or off? There was there was a science fiction writer once, right, called Isaac Asimov, mm -hmm. um, and he he said that uh, any piece of sufficiently advanced technology looks like magic, right? Right? Am I quoting the right sci-fi? Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. So 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 um, so just because we don't understand it doesn't mean that it has much deeper function than we see, right? If you view a neuron as a wire, I guarantee you you're wrong. A neuron is not a wire. It is not a switch. It is probably some type of supercomputer within itself, itself. And then imagine you stack billions and billions and billions of supercomputers that are interconnected and have... That's Carl Sagan, right? That's Carl Sagan, right? We will, yes. Oh, I like this. You're coming out, all this, all this good sci-fi. Pun lady. Yes. There's so, uh, yeah, so, so, so imagine the complexity of that. And imagine, imagine a system that is better at routing information than anything that anything humanity has ever invented, right? Cisco eat your heart out, right? Like Cisco could never compete with how effectively neurons push packets of information, right? So what have you got? What is that? Supercomputer on a supercomputer on a supercomputer. What, what do we say about networking? It's like like n squared or something. The value of a network is, is yeah. What's that? Oh no, that's like people in the network. Yeah, what was? 
Exponential, yep, or, or factorial. Well, it's the greatest, it's world's greatest pharmaceutical factory. So is the rest of your body, by the way. Mm -hmm. The rest of your body is doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Your, the RNA in every single one of your cells is probably different. It's unique. It probably has its own fingerprint. It's RNA fingerprint. That's like the RAM of your system. It's constantly running different programs. The DNA stays the same. All right. Neurons and drones and how they could detect uh, mines and TNT and all that. How is that? I mean, what are the neurons exactly doing? It's sensory systems, right? A bee has... Exactly Eyes right. and like, you know, whatever. It's very simple. Detecting chemicals. It's a smell system, right? Yeah, it's essentially so an engineered smell system. And the neuron is just amplifying the signal. That's all it's doing. That's what I'm saying. It's super simple. It's like crude. So, so the neuron, we're using it for like a stupid thing. And that stupid thing can transform the, the way we interact with the world, right? Like the neuron is capable of so much more, just one neuron, right? And we're just using it for amplification. It's just an amplifier or signal. Like, think about that. Okay. So, yeah, very cool stuff. Uh, applied biotechnology, post nano bioeconomy, very cool stuff. Um, let's, uh, l I want to ask you a question about um, bio nanotechnology. Okay. So, what does that future look like as we scale down to the nano level and what will, will happen with those nanobots going in our body, et cetera, et cetera? So, so I, I, I once dreamed of what Ray Kurzweil used to say, right? Or still says, right? He talks about all the nanotech that was going to be floating around our bodies and fixing our bodies and whatever else. And I was like, oh, that'll be amazing one day when we see it. And then I realized, uh, as I became a scientist, that like that future is like here, right? T cells are molecular machines, right? Like our bodies are like exquisite molecular machines. They do things that we don't even comprehend, right? How does a protein fold? There we go. Right? We keep getting these, these, these answers, no one knows. Dress soiling bends over in pain. <laughs> discomfort. No, no one knows what's in soil either. Yeah, well, I feel like now I'm in that bathroom after. What's that? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so I view biology as nanobiotechnology. So I think, I think it's a cool term. Uh, nanotech, I think it's a really cool term. I think that when we meld machines and humanity and, and, and like biology, it's super, super powerful. Biology is molecular manufacturing. That's what it is, right? You take sugar atoms and you mix them and create systems that could purify water. What if we create systems like, why do we have a problem with water, right? What, when when this, this is a water plant, right? How, how do dolphins drink? How do whales drink their mammals like us? So, so external organs. <laughs> so like instead of like my burrito water filter, I have like a kidney. So I just have like a kidney so hanging out. Kidney. Just take a sip of the kidney. The, the okay, well, that's right? good. That'll go great in my kitchen. Got a Hannibal Lecter. So here. so so yeah. <laughs> Biology is weird. Right? So so are we, by the way. All, all the biologists are weird. So we learned that. We have today. a few fellow biologists floating around. There. Weird. Weird. <laughs> I thought they were all cool, man. You like, gotta go to the lab I after I hours. Insulting people, yeah, man. Well, <laughs> come visit Indie Bio downstairs. What, what do we call Indie Bio downstairs? Alan. So that Alan, that guy over there, that's the Miraculin guy. That's the guy that makes. Hey. Yeah. Woo! Shout out Miraculin. Yeah. 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 Alan, what, what are you gonna bring into our lives? Uh, sweetness. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so it's uh, asylum. Oh, you should. Yeah. You should have been like. You should have been like Oprah. You should have yeah. been like Oprah and put some under the chair. Yeah. Like, right. You get miraculous. You get miraculous. <laughs> he, he got out of the asylum. We call it the asylum, right? Because people downstairs in Indy Bio, they, they go nuts sometimes. Yeah. I'm glad they're controlling our own yeah. future. Yeah. We're also on Jesse Street, right, which is right, right next to really? the Tenderloin. Yeah, yeah. So, so we get regular, uh, regular biological hazards outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Why are you? Did you the lower street? them into your lab? Uh, you could test it, but that's actually, it's probably more dangerous what's outside than what's inside. Yeah, I don't know about that. It'd be really easy, you know what I mean? Just, like, just have a little, you know, there's lots of little presents on the street. Uh -huh. Wow. You could say, what, what species did that? <laughs> <laughs> taking notes here. That's hilarious, man.
Thank you. Why are you in Jesse Street? Why is it? Why is it? Why is it like? Oh, it's San Francisco, right? So it's like anywhere nice is crazy expensive. Anywhere like not so nice is still crazy yeah. expensive, right? So. But you live in the basement of some place, not we, so. We nice. live in the we live in the basement, yeah. Mm. So we don't see the light very often. That's great. That's good. That's That's good. Yeah. yeah. Sounds but nice. but Indie Bio has a wet lab in it. Indie, we do. Indie Bio gives a nice round round of money. To yes, the, we to fund the, we fund companies. We fund them with two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's like a low end seed. Uh, and then, and then we create like amazing things. So, so we really, we really view it as like, you know, how, how do you how do you turn science fiction into science reality? It's like you fund it, you bring it, you bring it into reality, and then you force it to become something real, something that customers want to buy, right? So, it's not a business unless you have customers, right? It's it's not, a, you know, the, your science is not a product until something someone can buy, right? Like this is our philosophy, and I think this is what's bringing this future back. Wow. Yeah, you're into it. Yeah, your first customer, right? Here. All right. It's, it's uh, you're you're taking what was given to humanity and given to the universe with biology, and you're figuring out how to do these epic things with it. And it's something that we're all very interested in. That's why we're here today, listening to it. And uh, so let's um, let's go ahead. And we'll, we we do have to um, bring the show to an end, and we will uh, open up some time for uh, for questions out outside um, at, in the uh, piano fight area. Um, grab a drink, stick around, talk to your um, fellow friends out here. Um, I would like to just say a huge thank you to Ryan Bethencourt. Huge thank you to our team.